Welcome back. This set of notes is going to cover just the Congress of Vienna, and after you're done with these notes, we will do a map in class. So the Congress of Vienna, let's go ahead and set the stage. So after the defeat of Napoleon, the heads of European countries were looking to establish a long-lasting peace after so many years of war. A series of meetings in Vienna, known as the Congress of Vienna, were called to bring peace to Europe. All right, so the legacy of the Congress of Vienna. The plan adopted by the Congress restored Europe to its pre-revolutionary status. So before the French Revolution, before 1789. A new political map of Europe was drawn to resemble the pre-war boundaries. And absolute monarchs are going to be restored to power in many nations. So here is a map before they redrew it. All right. So notice the changes. Here's the before. The French territory is in yellow. The French dependencies are in that minty green. Napoleon's allies, his buddies, are in this darker green. And now, after the Congress of Vienna, this is what Europe is going to look like. All right. So we're going to have Prussia in this olive green color, the Austrian Empire in this blue, France in the purple, and you guys see the differences in the boundaries of these empires. The French territory has been significantly uh, cut down to just the original France area before uh, the French Revolution happened. All right, and the third legacy is called the Balance of Power Doctrine. And it is a doctrine that have the power of the European countries equalized or balanced so that no one single European country would threaten or overpower the others. So this is a political cartoon. And in here, you have a bunch of people. They are all representing countries throughout Europe, and they each are given one gun with a bayonet, and each one is touching a model of the world. And that's showing that each person has equal balance, has equal power on uh, the continent of Europe. All right, so the fourth legacy of the Congress of Vienna we're going to have two new political philosophies that are going to emerge. And these should look very familiar to you. We're going to have liberalism and conservatism. Liberalism, it's where the European middle class business leaders and merchants who wanted to give more political power to elected parliaments, this is the category that they would fall into. They are the ones that believe change is okay. Change is good. Change is needed. Um, you can remember back when President Obama was first elected president, his campaign policy in one word was change. And he is a liberal. Liberals tend to be on the sides of the Democrats. And on the flip side of that, we have conservatism, where wealthy European landowners and nobles who wanted to preserve the traditional monarchies of Europe are all going to be grouped into. They are the ones that believe change is not okay, that the old way of doing things, that is what should be done. And conservatives tend to lie towards the Republican side in our government. So the long-term effects. So the efforts to maintain peace would be effective for the next 100 years until the outbreak of World War I. Nationalism, which is pride in one's country, is going to spread throughout Europe. People are going to be uh, more prideful of their country and wanting to do more for their country because their country is the best. And more and more people throughout the world saw democracy as the best form of government. 
and the social attitudes of Europe were forever changed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that ends our standard 8A. You guys are going to be doing a map on the Congress of Vienna and then a quick little review that covers all of standard 8A right before you take your quiz. All right, I'll see you guys in class.